G'day there guys, quirky Australian man here. It's your main man Marky and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now, I know you guys love this content, so I want you to subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe button down below. But no, like the video if you haven't, um, sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and as always, have a good time. Thank you. Posted by user laughphysical269. Titled... Am I the a-hole for asking my roommate to be more polite towards my guests? So I, 20 female, live with Erica, 27 female. She's usually nice and cleans up after herself and all that stuff, but we had an issue recently. Last week, a guy, Josh, 21 male, that I'm seeing, came over sometime in the evening. When he arrived, she was in the kitchen cooking some kind of curry. Josh and I went up to my room almost right away, and once we got up there, he sort of awkwardly said that he absolutely hates the smell of curry, can't really be around it because it makes him want to bath, and he had to leave. The last time before that when Josh slept over, apparently Erica was blowing her nose an ungodly number of times in the morning. He could hear it because her room shares a wall with a bathroom, and it grossed him out a ton. Apparently, he also heard her fart super loud when he went to the bathroom late at night once too. Basically, he thinks she's super gross, and as a result, can barely stand to be at our house. We've actually had discussions about getting serious, but he said the Erica thing is holding him back from it since he didn't feel like he could date me if he didn't think I had the kind of friends that he'd want to be friends with or set up with his friends. This morning... Josh came over, and Erica was hard-boiling eggs, and again, the kitchen smelled like farts, and he had to leave. I confronted Erica about trying to be a little less loud and cook less smelly food all the time, because I feel like it's really rude towards Josh that she's literally making him so uncomfortable that he needs to drive back to his house 25 minutes away and waste all that gas. To my surprise, Erica, who is normally calm and polite, I've never seen her mad before, even when I accidentally ruined some of her expensive kitchen stuff. She didn't even ask me to pay for it because accidents happen, you know? She got really angry and said that she wasn't going to adjust her whole life for random people that I'm sleeping with. I was really hurt by the random people comments because it's not like I'm sleeping with different strangers all the time and told her all the things that Josh had said about her just being generally disgusting like with the nose blowing sounds and the farting, and she said her bodily functions were going to happen like it or not. I was still hurt and told her that it was no wonder she was still single at her age, that she couldn't show basic respect to other people, and also said the thing Josh said about not wanting to be serious with me because he thinks I surround myself with bad and impolite people. Erica then said, the reason he isn't committing to you has nothing to do with me. It's because you're gullible enough to believe him when he feeds you crap like that. Once again, I'm not changing my life or magically stopping my bodily functions because of someone who has not said more than two words to me at a time. I basically just walked away crying at how much it had escalated, and now I'm posting here. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. I might be the a-hole because supposedly I'm asking my roommate to adjust her whole life, not cook smelly food, not fart and blow her nose super loud, to make my friend more comfortable at my house. I feel like Eric is right with this one. He literally sounds like a child that can't handle girls existing as humans and is using her as an excuse not to commit. Sure, it's gross, but it's natural. And she's not doing it with the intent to piss anyone off. And it's not like any of the things she's doing are out of the ordinary. Josh, on the other hand, is doing things with the intent to piss Erica off and acting like a child once again. I can see how OP is defending him if she's known for being gullible, but really, that's no excuse to be attacking Erica for it. Especially if Erica forgave OP for destroying something that was expensive? Like, come on, she's giving you so much leeway. Ultimately, I'm gonna go with Josh and OP are the a-hole here. That part's pretty damn obvious, isn't it? Now in the comments, Sherilyn Fenn Fatal says, You're the a-hole. In my estimation, it's Josh who was rude by attempting to force Erica to behave to his standards in her own home. 
Then you sweep in and try to enforce, and tell her all the ugly things he's said about her. Like she should give a damn about your fuck buddy's opinion, other than to say, there's the door. If Josh cares so much about smelly food and Erica simply existing being herself, then maybe you should go to him instead of him coming over. And OP replies, He lives with his parents, so my house is the only option. Very high and mighty for a guy who doesn't even have his own place to live to say you're not good enough to date because he doesn't see your roommate as someone to set his bros up with. Also, Erica is not an object to be handed over to his friends. What the hell? And he's 21, while Erica is 27. Why would she even want to date someone in his friend group? So you want your roommate to live differently in her home because some guy you want to get serious with thinks she's gross. You're the a-hole. Edit, title is super misleading. Was she impolite by being in her own room and cooking food and minding her own business? Dopey replies, She's impolite because she's not willing to be more courteous to guests, and I feel like she could blow her nose a little quieter, or maybe cook strong-smelling food at less inconvenient times. These are not reasonable requests. It's not impolite to cook dinner at dinner time just because your not-boyfriend doesn't like the smell. As someone with occasional sinus issues, we can't effing control how loud it is. If the sinus is clogged, it needs to be unclogged. You're the a-hole. You're asking your rent-paying roommate to walk on pins and needles just so you can have a guest over who contributes nothing to the household. It isn't your roommate's fault if your boyfriend can't stand the smell of curry or cooked eggs. Honestly, it sounds like even if she stops doing the things you have already asked her to do, your boyfriend will just come up with more things he doesn't like. I'd be willing to bet she is already on edge wondering what your boyfriend is going to complain about next. Something to consider. You describe your roommate as calm and polite, whom you have never seen mad before. Yet you and your boyfriend have managed to drive her into getting that mad at you. That on its own should tell you something. And OP replies... I suspect she might have just been jealous or like, it's a sore subject that I'm seeing someone regularly and she isn't. I'm pretty sure if she wanted to find a date, she could. You need to realize not everyone wants to date or gets jealous because they see someone else sleeping with people. Once you get older, you'll realize that. Yep. I'm the same age as Erica and realized that my dating pool is getting smaller because my standards for potential partners are much higher than they were when I was 20. Trust me, there's no way she feels jealous about you sleeping with this loser. If anything, she probably pities you. You're the a-hole. Posted by user Tara the Terrible. Titled... Am I the a-hole for buying my daughter boy shoes after my mother-in-law refused to? So my, 39 female, daughter, 6 female, went shoe shopping with her grandmother. My mother-in-law, 71 female, to pick out new shoes. She initially picked out a pair of Spider-Man shoes, as Spider-Man is currently her favourite superhero after watching Into the Spider-Verse a few times. Her grandmother said no, told her they were boys' shoes, and forced her to go to the other section to choose another pair. My daughter told her, and myself after she got home, that clothes are not for boys or girls and that anyone can wear whatever clothes they want. She was upset she couldn't get the shoes she actually wanted, which is something I've taught her and told her more than once. So on another night, we were in the same store and I told her she could get the shoes she wanted because I figured... If I'm going to teach her these things, I better be willing to back her up when she takes a stand on them. When we took them to her grandmother's house to bring to school the next day, they'd drop her and her twin sister off at school every morning. There was no avoiding this. I could tell my mother-in-law wasn't pleased, and later she called my wife to say that I was caving into a child and that she wouldn't buy my daughter shoes again. This might be the best solution in the long run regardless but I felt my daughter gave a reasonable argument, in my mind, why she should be able to wear the shoes she wanted, and I felt I should support her if I'm teaching her these principles in particular. But am I the a-hole? Opie has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. 
I might be the a-hole because I caved into a six-year-old versus an adult, and I think my mother-in-law might view this as having undermined her to my daughter as well. How can you read all that back to yourself and not think that the mother-in-law is just being a toxic beer? Like, I get that she was born in the 50s and a lot of those gender stereotypes were forced on her back in the day, but wouldn't you remember how you felt back then and want to move forwards in treating your own children and grandchildren better? It honestly baffles me how OP has to come here and ask if she is in fact being the a-hole in this situation. It's her own child, she can do what she wants with them. The mother-in-law isn't the parent, she has no authority in this situation, so there's no way that OP is undermining them. This child is six years old, like, they don't need to think about gender roles like that if they want to wear some Spider-Man shoes. This is just so overcomplicated and such unnecessary drama from a spiteful woman with nothing else to do. I would pay her no mind and tell her if she's got a problem, then just keep it to herself or there'll be consequences. Not the a-hole OP. Now in the comments, firmly that guy says, not the a-hole. You reinforced your parenting choices. You didn't cave to your daughter. Beats caving to a grandmother with her internalized misogyny. I'm a grown woman and always liked the more boyish colors when I was growing up. Blues and greens and the darker the better, please. The 10 year old loves that you took your daughter to get those shoes and are letting her be herself. I'm still grateful that my mother was like this and never tried to force me to be someone I wasn't. You sound like a great dad, not the a-hole. I'm a grown woman and shop on both sides of the store. Why restrict myself? Plus, women get like no pockets. Not the a-hole. You did exactly what you should have done. I'd be tempted to ask her, and what part of her shoes require a penis to use? But I wouldn't. Pfft. Everyone knows boys need space in their shoes for their massive testicles, hence the gendered sections in shoe stores. Not the a-hole. You're the parent, not your mother-in-law. Her outdated gender rules about clothing are just that. The only other person who has a say is your wife, and I'm guessing she agrees with you, which is why there was no, my wife was also pissed about the shoes. And OP says, she is supportive, but tends to have boundaries with her mum. She usually caves to pressure from her. I try to stay out of it and let her manage her family when it doesn't interfere with our children. It's tough to stand up to parents. Hopefully your wife can start imposing a few more boundaries since it is now affecting your daughter. I had to yell at my father about his behaviour over a boy doll that I got my son on Christmas morning. And OP replies, this isn't the first issue. I've already had to step in and draw a hard line already regarding this daughter on a different unrelated issue, but didn't feel it was relevant to this story and might color my mother-in-law unfavorably. She does love her grandchildren and she does help a lot in other ways. Sorry you're having to deal with this. Hopefully it gets easier for you. Posted by user Imaginary Topic 2127 Titled Am I the a-hole for not stopping my daughter from opening the shower door? So our shower has one of those multi-segmented doors that you slide across. My partner and I have a 13-month-old, very inquisitive daughter who likes to slide these doors across while we shower. When I shower, I simply put my big toe next to the sliding segment so our daughter cannot open it. It works well, I can still shower perfectly and no one is bothered. My partner gets very upset when they shower, and I refuse to come every time and physically remove our daughter, and especially so when I tell them to simply put her toe next to the door as I do, or close the outer bathroom door. My partner expects me to stop what I'm doing and entertain our daughter during shower time. Otherwise, our little one goes back to the bathroom. I feel like this could easily be resolved by closing the outer door when she's showering or using the toe trick. I don't see why I should have to change what I'm doing when there's an easy solution available. My partner thinks I'm being an a-hole. Am I the a-hole here? The fact that both of you guys refuse to look after your 13-month-old child while each of you showers 
tells me that you're not doing your duties as parents. I know I haven't had children of my own, but I feel like it's common sense to be watching your child, especially if it's in the bathroom while the other parent is trying to shower. Neither of you want to remove the child in the same situation that both of you face, and one of you is making more of a stink of it than the other. That doesn't automatically shift blame to one or the other. This is just the straw breaking the camel's back. Please sort yourselves out. Everyone sucks here. Now in the comments, Chaos and Dissonance says, Everyone sucks here. If your daughter is trying to open the door when you shower, and is opening the door when your significant other is showering, then both of you are letting a 13-month-old run free without supervision? Yeah, that sounds like an issue. Also, stopping what you're doing to watch your daughter, you're a parent. Get used to it. Glad you said this. He is demanding OP to stop the daughter, but not doing the same for her. No support here, shake my head. My daughter would try to mess with her mum, just simply going to the bathroom, and I'd be beefing with the baby like, bruh, leave your mum alone, sit down and relax. You're the a-hole. Just watch the 13-month-old for a bit and let your partner take a shower in peace. We're not talking about something that takes a Herculean effort. What about when OP is in the shower? Hardly see the partner entertaining the baby and allowing the OP to shower in peace either. Treat others how you want to be treated yourself. Did OP ever ask? If it's treat people how you want to be treated, then that matters. The partner clearly asked while there is no mention of OP doing so. They said don't think it's as big of an issue as their partner does, so I'd be surprised if they did. You're the a-hole. I don't know what's up with this sub tonight and people who are just obsessed with doing nothing for their partners. Remove your daughter and close the outer door yourself if it pisses you off so much. I thought I was the only one who saw that. Seems like there's a pattern to posts and many posts just get thrown in, even if the conflict might not be recent, but they make a post anyway. Probably so that the post gets noticed? Right now the theme is terrible baby names. <laughs> Posted by user Syllabub Entire 2038. Titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my brother if his kids go hungry? That's his problem, not mine. I'll call my brother Mike and my ex Tammy. Ten years ago, my then fiancé left me at the altar, which was the most humiliating thing I've ever been through, and went on a honeymoon with Mike. In her note, she told me she loved him since high school, but he was never interested, so she used me to get to him. She claimed to have loved me at some point, but after a drunken one-night stand, her and Mike knew they were soulmates. I'm not gonna lie, I was a wreck for about a year, and every time I tried to move forward that day, her mother tearfully handed me the notes, and everyone's faces would set me back. But time is a healer, and I have moved on. I disowned Mike and haven't spoken to the both of them in 10 years. For the first two years, my family hid that they had any contact with him, but then just basically sat me down one day and told me Tammy was pregnant and Mike was planning to marry her soon, so I needed to get over it because they were going to the wedding and the baby shower, etc. To be honest, I was hurt at why they went about it, but they're adults. I can't control what they do with their lives. I simply asked that they not invite me to anything that they would be at or expect me to forgive him, which they tried multiple times to make us talk. But after a year of no contact, they got the picture. Fast forward to last week, I heard Mike and Tammy are expecting their five child? Fifth child and Mike's business went bankrupt last September. Then the chain that Tammy works at closed down, and they have zero savings apparently. My family have hinted that my wife and I should help them because we are the most financially successful for the kids' sake. My wife told them straight up no, and said tell Mike to look for a job, and we left. A while later, I got a call from an unknown number. I had a feeling who it was, but I just had to answer. From the moment I said hello, both Mike and Tammy started ranting about me needing to get over Tammy. 
My wife's a queen. Saying I'm a piece of crap for punishing the kids for something that happened years ago. Finally, my brother asked me how does it feel to be the reason that his kids go hungry. So I told him that's his problem, not mine, and they started yelling and crying. So I just hung up, and since then, my whole family is calling me names for taking my anger out on Mike's innocent children. My wife said I should tell them all to go F themselves, and asked them to put their hands in their own pockets. Damn, your wife is one hardcore no bullshit woman OP. I would be proud to stand by her side as she just deflects all of this from the get go, and takes absolutely no crap from anyone in your family here. She's bang on the money, and I'd keep going at denying everything your family throws at you here. Those two deserve nothing from you. This is so obviously just a quick cash grab using manipulation tactics that it's kind of cringe that they'd go as hard as they are to do that to you. Block them all until they get some common sense. You're not the reason their kids are going without food. They are. You are not the a-hole. Now in the comments, Miss Murderpants says, I really am in love with your wife, and I'm getting a tan from her blazing shiny spine. She's right. Plus, she is truly all the family you need. Mike and Tammy made their choice 10 years ago. The thing is, Tammy knew what she was doing and could have ended it way before the ceremony. Coupled with the fact that she had a one night stand, where your bro gets his culpability, the gross cherry on top, they took your honeymoon. I'd have sued her for that. I hope you got the ring back or Jews for the cost. Oh yeah, might be good to mention to your family you already chipped in and state the above reasons if they never paid you back. Not the a-hole. Sky Diamond 01 says, I am loving the wife too, and she's absolutely correct, especially about them reaching in their own pockets. The audacity of Mike and Tammy calling and screaming like they have any moral high ground is laughable. Block them all and enjoy life with your real family. That kick-ass wife you have. This. Your wife is amazing. Mike did you a huge favor when he took Tammy off of your hands. I bet if all of your family members pitched in, they would be able to feed Mike's kids. Keep up that no contact. You're doing great, not the a-hole. Not the a-hole? And it sounds like you definitely upgraded when marrying your wife. Good on you, OP. Tell the rest of the family to help Mike if they're so concerned, and if you're really worried about the kids going hungry, maybe a call to CPS is in order. And OP says, I agree about the upgrade. Mora is the type of person that everyone needs in their lives. I don't know how my sorry ass ever got so lucky. Tell them the location to the nearest food bank, and tell them that you donated food. That way, you're providing for them and others. Problem solved. Not the a-hole. I'm sorry that happened to you, but you dodged a huge bullet there. Your wife is a queen. Take her on a nice date. And OP replies, We are in lockdown, so I plan on doing a DIY pamper night for her. Gotta make sure my queen's nails look good. Also, make her some bomb-ass food, or order some in. Everyone loves when they don't need to prepare food. Already on that, got her favourite for being in the middle of all of this BS. Good. To be honest, I always take food and chores being done over nails and hair because I'm lazy and like food too much. Also, preheating her car for her before work if it doesn't have remote start and you're in a place that's still in winter. Posted by user Moveta321654 Titled, Am I the a-hole for refusing to move? So, my female 42, husband, male 44, and I have been married for 21 years. We have two adult children, male 22 and 24. One is in college out of state, and the other is in the Navy. When we first got married, my husband was in the Navy, and we spent the first 10 years of our marriage moving from place to place, wherever his new duty station was. I found it hard to make friends, and I could not keep a job, 
so I made a difficult decision and decided to be a stay-at-home mom. When he got out of the Navy 11 years ago, he took a job and we moved. Three years in, he got offered a job in another part of the company, however, it was in another state, so we moved again. We stayed there for six years and I went back to college and got my degree and began looking for work. I found a job that I liked in my field, and six months into working, he said he was offered a job with a new company and wanted to take it, but that would mean we would be moving almost 2,000 miles from where we were in a new state. I reluctantly agreed because the new state would have more job opportunities for me, and we would be closer to our family, which is something that we had not had in many years. Last night, my husband came up to me and said that there was a job opening in his company and he wanted to apply for it. It would mean a pay raise and better hours, but the caveat would be that we have to move again. We've been living in our new state for three years. I love it here. I have an amazing job and I am making great money. I finally have friends and am able to socialize. I told him that I am not moving again. Anytime we have to move, he always leaves first and I end up being responsible for selling and packing the house and I am not doing that again. Our son's college is only two hours from here. We can see him twice a month. If we move, that means we would have at least a day's drive and would only be able to do that once or twice a year. Now my husband is upset with me and guilt tripping me because he claims I do not support him. I told him that was BS because I spent most of my life moving from place to place to support his career. He told me that I am selfish and he is just trying to provide for us. I told him that we are more than comfortable where we are now and that if he truly wants to take the job, he will be going alone. Am I the a-hole for refusing to move again? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. I think I'm the a-hole because my reluctance to move could cause my husband to miss out on a career opportunity. Your husband seems to value his work above your own work and seems convinced that you moving away from your amazing job that you have right now and him moving up in his job is a net positive thing for the family. Like you've obviously set a precedent before now where you were happy to move and deal with the ins and outs of moving under the assumption that things will be better for your family financially as a result. Your sacrifices then were worth it. But in my humble opinion, now what he's asking you to do is not worth it to you anymore. Sure, it's better for him all round, but he is refusing to consider the impact it'll have on the marriage and your own personal and emotional health to be taken from somewhere you've finally settled in well. The situation may have to be that he moves alone and deals with it. At this point in time, your son is in college. I don't honestly see the benefit or good change that this new pay rise will have besides the job freeing him up to work better hours that are healthier for him. Ultimately, I'm not in this relationship and I'm only getting OP's side of the story, so I have to go with not the a-hole based on what I'm reading. I disagree with the husband on this one. Now in the comments, Shaq1071 says, Not the a-hole. You already gave yourself the answer. You supported his career for 21 years. You gave up everything for him. Your social life, your family, you even postponed your education. And now that everything is settled, you're doing financially fine too. He accuses you of not supporting him? He should start supporting you for a bit. You did your part and now it's your time to shine. Perfect reply. He obviously has no idea what you have given up and gone through in supporting him, or he just doesn't care. You're both relatively young, so if he does decide to move, it'll be your decision whether to follow him or not, but giving up the life you finally have for yourself could cause resentment on your part. Not the a-hole, but I think you may be married to one. This so much. My husband's in a job that may require him to move around, and before we decide on a move, he would insist on factoring in my comfort, proximity to good medical care. I have an autoimmune condition. Availability of great schools now that we have a daughter, etc. 
All that may not have a set monetary value, but they are definitely worth something, or we won't see people spending money to join planned communities. This is what happens when one person is always given priority. The first time they're told no, they lash out and call the other person selfish and unsupportive. Not the a-hole OP. Let your husband move if he wants. You finally have a good life, and he can expect you to give it all up, but you don't have to. Reminds me of a quote. Equality looks like oppression to the privileged. Yep, he's confusing, you don't support me with, you don't support me at your expense indefinitely. This, indefinite support without hesitation or question is not a partnership. It's like a bizarre hostage situation. Saving this comment because I really needed to see it. Just started the process of separation from my STBX and couldn't put my thumb exactly on why I felt so imprisoned. You hit the nail on the head. And for those that weren't aware, STBX is soon to be X. Pooch on Mum says, Not the a-hole. Your husband should be discussing each move with you, and it should be a combined decision, especially now that you have a job. His job and offer does not automatically have preference over yours. Did he ever discuss a move with you after he left the Navy? Or was it always, we are doing this? I was still on the fence given the history with the Navy. Totally understandable needing to move and being used to it, but the fact that he expected you to sell and pack the house every time is what made up my mind on the judgement. For the post-Navy jobs, I can't believe the companies didn't give him time to settle his affairs and then move. It seems like he took it for granted that you would sell and pack the house every time. That too with little kids when they were younger. I could never imagine being in that situation alone. Stand up for yourself now. It is not too late. Have a conversation about the pros and cons, about long-term plans. It is okay if you end up deciding to move. Just make sure that you have a say in it. And OP includes a post-update. I hope this is allowed. I apologize for not being able to respond to everyone, and thank you all for your kindness and replies. To answer some questions, 1. My husband and I have been together since I was 15, and he was 17. He joined the Navy right after graduation from high school when he was 18, and I was 16, but had to wait two years before we could marry. 2. He works for a company that is plants in 15 states. He's currently in middle management, but if he wants to advance his career further, he would need to go to another plant out of state. 3. Financially, we are more than comfortable. We do not need any more money. 4. My son plans to stay in the place that he is after college. We have a great relationship with him, and he comes home one time a month, and we see him one time a month. My other son comes home on leave whenever he can, and stays with us. We are very close to both of the boys. 5. I talked to my husband again tonight, and told him quite firmly that moving again was not an option for me. The area he wants to move has very little jobs in my field, and specialty in that area and I would need to commute more than an hour one way from a job versus the 20 minutes that I have here. We are sandwiched between two major cities, and if we move, we would be an hour from the most major city. I would also have to take a massive pay cut and work a menial job to build a new network to find employment in my field. And six, my husband is disappointed in me for not wanting to leave. He left to stay with a friend because he needs to think. He doesn't understand why I would force him to turn down an opportunity to advance his career further. I told him to take all the time he needs, but I am not moving again. I said I would revisit the possibility when I'm ready for retirement in 15 years, but no sooner. Posted by user SammySamXXX Titled Am I the a-hole for using the money I saved to get my stepson a prosthetic leg instead of contributing towards my brother's wedding? So I, male 33, have a younger brother, male 25, who's the family's golden child. Once he was born, he had three parents, mum, dad, and me. I was required to drop everything any time to look after him. 
I shared 65% of his care in the first few years of his life, and then as he grew older, my parents expected me to provide for him financially. When he fell sick, I ended up paying for his medical expenses, driving him places, going to the doctor's follow-ups with him. I did all of that while all my other social relationships fell apart. No more friends calling me, nor seeing me. I had trouble committing to a serious relationship because I didn't give it my all. Once I met my fiancé, I kept my distance and focused on her and my stepson. My mum would call me to ask why I'm no longer doing X things for my brother. They made comments that my fiancé stole me to get me to raise her son. He's 13. He uses crutches because his left leg is amputated. We do everything together. I love him so much and I can't wait to adopt him and my fiancé is happy with it. I only visit family on big occasions since my aunt is kind and treats my fiancé well. My brother is getting married in March and I heard the family was putting money together to pay for the wedding. My dad called me to ask to contribute with $15,000, which was a lot. I have other responsibilities, like I'm a dad now, and I need to focus on my son's needs. After talking, I agreed to pay $10,000. Then my aunt called to let me know that no one else paid a dime, and it was just me who contributed, and it was a lie from my parents to get me back on track, because my brother is and should always be my priority. I went to talk to them. Then I blew up after my mum started talking about how my fiancé was clearly using me to provide for her son. I argued with her. I told her I won't be contributing anything towards the wedding and will use the money to get my stepson a prosthetic leg, since he is my priority now. My fiancé couldn't believe when I told her. They were shocked and my uncle berated me for doing this and called me nuts, because my fiancé isn't even married to me yet, so she and her son weren't yet family. I argued with them, and then I left. I noticed more relatives started berating me, saying I ruined it for my brother. He'll resent me, and I was being selfish and stupid to do that. They asked me to take my rose-coloured glasses off, and realise that my family remains, but relationships like that, meaning my fiancé, that are based on greed, don't last, and I will admit that they were right. I don't regret what I've done for my brother. He needed me, and I've always been supportive of him, but this wedding isn't really for him, but for my parents' image, and trying to show it off to everyone. I'm sure my brother prefers a simple celebration, but they control everything. No, it's not a cultural thing, but more about looking good to outsiders. I know I wasn't clear about why my family thinks my fiancé was with me because of money, but it's because of my appearance. I have a burn scar that covers the side of my face and goes down my neck because of a car accident I had three years ago. It doesn't bother me. I feel confident enough to socialise, and it's never been an issue. But my family keeps bringing it up like they're shocked my fiancé isn't bothered by that. I wanted to mention this, but I hesitated because I wasn't sure what people are going to think. I'm sorry. It's quite clear your parents are manipulative and toxic wastes of people, not worth your time to be around. But for some reason you've maintained contact at 33 years old. I can respect your resilience for doing so, and I'm sure there's a reason for it that I'm not seeing here since you can only say so much in one post. If they've gotten the family to gang up on you when they knowingly aren't putting any money towards this wedding, then there's a big problem here. I'm beginning to suspect uh, you make a lot of money, so they're putting that financial expectation on you. That makes them terrible people. And of course, if your brother's 25 years old and resents you for not being the sole financial provider of his wedding, then he has bigger problems in his life, oh my god. They all know your situation with your family and their past abuse towards you and continue to disregard all of that and just say, you know what, you're making big problems now, let's forget all our past with you. I say let this continue to be their problem and cut them all out of your life. They're dead weight and you don't need them. Not the a-hole. Now in the comments, Tinkerific says, Not the a-hole. 
They wanted you to pay for your brother's wedding? Oh, hell no. There's nowhere on planet Earth where that's required. Your brother pays, his fiancée pays, and they should work with your parents and future father-in-law and mother-in-law to see what they can contribute. No one else in the family should be expected to help, let alone be the sole source of funding. I honestly think you should go no contact with your family. These people are just going to keep using you. I couldn't believe they called OP's relationship with fiancé one based on greed. Their kid is not a bank. <laughs> they're projecting. Not the a-hole. They are using you, manipulating you, and ruining your shot of having a happy life. You should go no contact. I almost never recommend going no contact with family, but yours is very toxic, and preventing you from having normal relationships and building your own life. Your stepson and your fiancé are your priority, and frankly, paying for a wedding and a prosthetic leg so the boy can have an ordinary life doesn't compare. And OP replies, Yes, it's difficult trying to constantly fight with family, but I'm tired and I can't take any more of this. They're probably in my brother's ear right now, telling him that I don't care about him anymore and such, but... My stepson deserves a normal life like any other kid. Life is passing by, and I really want him to be able to do all the things that he couldn't do before once he gets a prosthetic leg. He's excited about it, and keeps asking a lot of questions which is heartwarming, and it saddens me that he never got the opportunity to get it sooner. Cut contact with your parents and only talk to your brother directly. If you still want a relationship with him, and your aunt, who was the MVP of your family, for having the guts to tell you that you were being manipulated. Not the a-hole. A kid's medical needs are more important than a party. And OP replies, Absolutely. It's very clear that my parents are the ones who want an expensive party and are being unreasonable with the wedding cost. They lied to me about the whole family paying, but that wasn't true. Posted by user Empty Pomegranate, titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my co-workers why I quit? I, 21 female, started working at a coffee shop about two months ago. I loved it when I first started. It was hard work, but enjoyable, and I made good tips. I liked my co-workers and the owners as well. For context, the owners are a young couple. The owner I'm referencing in this is the wife. Let's call her V. Yesterday, when I was working my shift, I saw some things that make me wildly uncomfortable. To start, the manager that works there, I'll be calling her M, does all the duties of a manager, but is not technically one. I found out that she's being paid $9 an hour, which is less than half of what Starbucks managers make. This is a family-owned shop in a wealthy part of town. It's criminal how much they pay her. It's also important to note that the shop is severely understaffed. Before I quit, there were three employees, plus the owners, who both have jobs. I was expected to work and close alone. I got off training less than a month ago, on Friday and Saturday nights, which are the busiest nights of the week. It's also a bakery, so it still gets business at night. At this point, I think they're understaffing to make a profit. Anyways... Aside from the pay thing, yesterday while I was on shift, I witnessed V yelling at M about completely mundane things. It's extremely inappropriate and degrading. The way she talked to M made it seem like she was a child, not the grown woman who keeps this door from falling apart. It made me so uncomfortable to see the owners treating the most valuable worker they have with such little respect and regard for decency. I have a no-tolerance policy for things like this in my workplace. Additionally, the owners tried to implement an illegal practice that requires employees to pay draw shortages. It's illegal in my state to do so unless written consent is given, and only if the deduction doesn't make the worker go below minimum wage. This wasn't an issue until my draw came up seven bucks short on Friday night. They tried to make me pay it, even though everyone else also worked that day. I just had the responsibility of counting the draw. 
They ended up dropping the whole thing after I told them I would call the workforce commission in my state and report them for illegally deducting my wages. I know it's only seven bucks, but it isn't about the money. It's about the legality and the lack of respect in all regards. Anyways, I quit this morning. I decided it would be appropriate to tell my friend who recently got hired but hadn't started yet what happened, as well as the high school age girl I worked with there. I thought it would be important for them to know about the treatment going on. I'm afraid am I the a-hole, because I think what I did was right, but it also might not have been my place to contact my co-workers and tell them what happened. If they quit, the place will go under, which I don't feel that bad about because it's the owner's fault that they treat staff badly, but I still do feel a little guilty. Am I the a-hole for potentially causing a shop to close down and for contacting my co-workers? If it's at risk of shutting down over having to pay the minimum wage to people, then it shouldn't be allowed to operate in the first place. That's scummy work practices and they shouldn't be taking advantage of people like that. I would absolutely do the same if I was in your position. You're only an a-hole to these people because they don't get the advantage of people being ignorant to the reality of the situation when you say things like this to the rest of the co-workers. What you did was not an a-hole move, but actually quite the opposite. You did a good job, not the a-hole. Now in the comments, Pile Driver says, That which can be destroyed by the truth should be. A quote from PC Hodgell. Not the a-hole. If the owners of the coffee shop are treating their employees in an unsustainable way, they are the ones who will deal with the fallout. That being said, I highly doubt that you speaking frankly about your experiences working there will lead to the shop's closure. Best case scenario, they have to start treating their workers better. More likely scenario, they continue to be the a-hole with a high turnover rate that they blame on incompetent help. I wonder if the wife is stealing money from the register and trying to make the employees pay for it. Seven dollars here, seven dollars there, etc. Before long, the employees will be paying them to work there. I got fired from a certain dirty diner chain for stealing from the register. It kept coming up 30 bucks short. Every time I worked with a particular manager, I was an easy and obvious target because I was addicted at the time. I never stole from them though. Not once. I was too paranoid. Also, I was raised better than that. I'm not a thief. I'm many things, but thief is not one of them. They never brought me up on charges. They just stopped putting me on schedule. Two months later, the manager that I was working with every time money came up missing was fired for stealing. Hmm. Interesting. Not the a-hole. Younger staff especially if it's a first job, may not know their rights or know that they're being berated for small mistakes is not accepted in the workplace. You did good to warn them. If the business fails, that's the fault of the owner's poor management skills. Business owners talk about the free market and all, but never want to take the blame for them not succeeding in the market because they're incompetent. Nor do they want to deal with laborers deciding to sell their work elsewhere when they choose. Not the a-hole. If they don't want everyone to quit, the owners should 1. Not deduct wages, 2. Pay people properly, and 3. Not understaff as severely. Like, it's not your fault that the owners suck. What goes around comes around. So OP adds in an update in this post and says, Thank you for all the kind words. After I quit, I felt more confident about the situation, as she tried to start gaslighting me about not understanding reality. She also said several times it was sad that I was quitting over a cash shortage. I made sure to correct her and tell her that it was her abusive behaviour that made me quit. Update, a lot of comments are suggesting that I make the report anyways. I really want to do this. The only issue is they will obviously know that it was me, and I'm afraid of retaliation of some kind. They know where I live because they had to come pick up the key to the store. The owner locked themselves out from my apartment at one point, which weirded me out, but that's another issue. I know it's unlikely that anything would happen, but I'm nervous nonetheless and not sure exactly what would be best. I made sure to text the current workers the laws and explain to them why it is illegal. 
so I'm hoping they will be able to stand their ground. And final update. I've decided to go ahead and file the complaint, partly for the illegal wage deductions, but mainly because of the underpayment of the manager. I realised it's abnormal to have a shop and two owners with full-time jobs, but no real manager. Then I realised what they were doing, taking away one or two tasks that would classify her as a manager so they could continue to underpay her. It's abhorrent, and I hope the investigation reveals underpayment and she's able to collect what belongs to her. Posted by user Caffeine Hunter, titled, Am I the a-hole for making my boyfriend hold our baby without question? So we, 24 female, 32 male, were in the kitchen. He was leaning up against the counter and chatting, I was holding the baby. I held her out for him to take her so I could pull up my pants, but I didn't mention it. He didn't take her right away and said, why? He does this quite often. Usually we can joke it off, but I'm getting sick of trying to jostle with him to hold her. So this time it just made me angry. It's his damn daughter too. I snapped and yelled, just take her, which he did. Once I had pulled up my leggings, he said I could have just said that I needed to adjust but my argument was I shouldn't need to give him a reason to hold his baby daughter. I took her back immediately once I was done, and he said that he doesn't want to be around me as I make him feel like crap. He's now been sulking in his man cave for an hour. Am I the a-hole? Edit, he's now been down there for almost three hours. Edit two, thank you everyone for your responses. I wasn't expecting this to get so much traction. It appears we definitely need to work on our communication and discussing our responsibilities, regardless of who is at fault. Thank you again for all your responses and advice. I definitely agree that you need to work on your communication in these sorts of situations here, and figure out why what you're saying is making him feel like crap. Potentially, if you were to give this one more context and examples of conversations, it may turn into an everyone sucks here judgement for me, because words can and do hurt. It does seem like this is an overreaction of sorts caused by a straw that broke the camel's back here, where he's held his tongue until now. And that's okay. Arguments and fights are okay and healthy, and they lead to positive outcomes a lot of the time. The fact that you don't attack him for this and you allow him the time to be alone and sort out his emotions is very commendable too. I like how you're approaching this situation, OP. I'm going to have to go with not the a-hole for this one, as it seems like it's just your average argument, and you shouldn't be expected to clarify your reason for handing your child over every single time. Now in the comments, not the a-hole. Like you said, you shouldn't need to give him a reason to hold his daughter. What if you were holding her out to him because your blood sugar was low and you were dizzy and about to fall down? Would he have been like, well, it's your fault for not telling me the reason you need me to hold my daughter, if she got hurt in the fall? And OP replies, you know, that's an excellent point I hadn't even considered. There's a video online where this legit happened to a woman at a gas station or convenience store or something. She got kind of weird and glazed over. The clerk took the baby, the woman promptly had a seizure. It's sudden and dangerous, and there's no time for a question as stupid as why. That's so scary, oh my god. Something similar happened to me. Baby was just over a year, I was having a health issue, and we were in a hotel. I was holding my baby, and suddenly became faint all over. The staff immediately took the child, got me a seat, and found my husband and older child in the play area. I was barely coherent. All sorted a week later, just had to wait for the procedure. The issue was getting progressively worse. It's surprisingly common, and there are all sorts of different reasons as to why it happens. My mum tells a story of when I was a year old and she was pregnant with my brother. She was in the waiting room of the doctor's office and got a strange feeling, and said out loud, please take care of my baby, and passed out on the floor. Scary stuff indeed. Not the a-hole at all. It shouldn't be unusual for a dad to take a baby. Are you okay? I feel like for you to get to the point of posting here, you might not be. 
And OP replies, I feel guilty about making him upset, but at the same time, justified in the view that he shouldn't need a reason to hold our baby, so wanted outside opinions. Thank you for asking though. I agree with you. If you ask and you have a genuine reason too, like you did, he should sense that he needs to grab the little one. That being said, is it worth having more of a chat to him to explain how you feel? He doesn't sound like a bad guy given that you can joke about certain stuff and sometimes a more direct message solves all of these things. Good luck, Mama. DM if you need to talk. Posted by user LateYellow7154 Titled Am I the a-hole for shaming my family for not supporting me enough during my cancer treatment? So I think I'm in the right on this, but I've also been told I'm an abrasive a-hole, so maybe I should have handled this differently. I'm 25, female, and have cancer. I'm not going to die. We caught it early enough to know that I will survive this. Chemo sucks. I'm already sick of the G.I. Jane, Natalie Portman, and Imperator Furiosa jokes after I shaved my head. But at least I can now smoke pot in a state that bans recreational marijuana use. The other night, I got phone calls from my sister and cousin letting me know that our auntie, who is the most overzealous, narcissistic, self-absorbed woman we know, was planning on having the whole family show their support for my cancer diagnosis by getting everyone to shave their heads. Personally, I always thought this stunt was really stupid, and my sister and cousin are against this for a number of reasons. My sister is a flight attendant and just got off furlough, so she doesn't want to jeopardize her job by showing up to work with a shaved head when her airline has a very strict dress code. My cousin is 14, has waist-length red hair that makes her look like a ginger Rapunzel, and is already dealing with self-esteem issues. Her hair is the only thing she likes about herself, so shaving it off would destroy her mentally. They tried to talk my aunt out of it, but she wasn't budging. We think my aunt is doing this to get clout on social media. Maybe even get an article in People. I don't know. Like I said, she will make anything about her. So without naming names, I made this post on Facebook letting everyone in our family know that the jig is up. The gist was that I don't want to see anyone shaving their heads in the name of supporting me just because I have cancer, especially when some of them were the ones behind the G.I. Jane jokes. Instead of doing something that would make them feel good about themselves, why not do something to make me feel good? Like, oh, I don't know, driving me to my appointments now and then, or helping around the apartment, or cooking when I don't feel like Hot Pockets again. Just something to make my routine a little easier while I deal with the side effects of chemo. Hell, even a lemonade stand will do because this is America and our healthcare system is a joke. This backfired, and now many of my relatives spearheaded by my aunt are putting me on blast by calling me ungrateful. I should be happy to see that I have my whole family supporting me on my battle, bleh, by doing this selfless act. They even went as far as to say that I was acting like a brat by saying they don't help out enough, and what I'm asking for is too much, even though they've done diddly squat since I got my diagnosis. So now my family, except my sister and cousin, think I'm an entitled jerk who is using her cancer diagnosis to get more out of them. And maybe I am the a-hole for how I handled this. I need a second opinion. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. I may be the a-hole because 1. I should have worded my Facebook post to be less accusatory, and more nicely put since this is a stressful situation in an already stressful time, and 2. I shouldn't be forcing additional responsibilities on relatives who are going through a lot due to current events effing our state over and have their own issues to deal with, especially when the decent members of my family are good, hard-working folk. It's just my aunt is a battle axe of a bully who thinks she's the matriarch of the family. Imagine asking for help while you're dealing with chemotherapy and having a chunk of your supposed support base attack you instead of being decent people. That's just wrong on so many levels. They're getting out of actually having to take on any responsibility and feeling good about themselves as an echo chamber, because if they didn't have each other, 
they may have to actually justify their terrible behavior. You're better off without the OP, not the a-hole. Now in the comments, 1931 Babyface says, Not the a-hole. You're the one with cancer. You are the one who needs the extra help. And guess what? Forcing a 14-year-old girl to shave her head is going to do what? Having your poor sister who just got her job back put that in jeopardy is going to do what exactly? Play the cancer card and say, I have cancer, F off. And OP replies, I know, right? I'm not a fan of our extended family, but I love my sister and cousin. I would be furious if their lives got screwed because of me. My sister's career is everything to her, and our cousin is just the sweetest little Cinnabon. I am quite protective of her. And Nervous Explorer replies, Dear family, it has come to my attention that some of you think I'm attempting to use the cancer card to guilt you into supporting me through my treatments. Nothing could be further from the truth. Help or don't help. I care very little at this point. What I do care about is that a couple of my relatives are being pressured into shaving their heads against their will by a certain someone, risking their careers as well as their self-esteem. I cannot stress enough that I am totally against this pointless virtue signaling, and will call said person out full blast on every social media outlet I have should any of you be forced to go bold against your will. I apologize if my first post made me seem entitled and selfish, but I'm sick. Yes, cancer card played, and tired of this self-righteous BS and a certain someone's desire to gain likes at my expense. You know who you are, stop it now. Love, OP. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. I had cancer, so I'm sorry to hear that. I know firsthand that it sucks. They're trying to make you feel like the a-hole because they want to support you in the way they feel like supporting you and not the way that you want to be supported. That's complete BS in my opinion. Forgive me if I'm making an assumption here, but it sounds like you have attention monsters on your hands here. They're unwanted and unneeded. It sounds like your aunt, especially, wants to talk about this when asked, so people can say, oh, how nice of you to join her, so she can look good. It's crap, and you really don't need it on top of this. Side note, I did three rounds of chemo, and nobody warned me of constipation, so ask them for RX laxatives. And Squidulacra says, not the a-hole. This support is what people who don't actually want to provide help do to save face and gain social points, just like you pointed out. Your aunt can F right off. And OP replies, take my word for it. I'm just about to go no contact on this branch of the family. I'll make my own family with my sister and cousin. Sounds like a good idea. Just because they're family doesn't mean you can't cut them off. No point in having toxic people damaging your already difficult life. Posted by user MediocreScallion96 Titled Am I the a-hole for writing a bad Yelp review about my child's daycare, calling them racist? So a while ago, my daughter, eight female, was complaining about her daycare because they were not giving her sunscreen. She asked for sunscreen, but they said that black people do not need sunscreen, but they actually do. Before the pandemic, they went on a field trip and they made all the black kids sit in the sun and made the white kids sit in the shade because it would damage their skin or some BS. I talked to the ladies at the daycare and they said that it was justified but said if we brought in a doctor's note, they would give her sunscreen. I made my daughter take it to school and let her share it with the other kids, but then the teacher took it, saying that she was not allowed to do that without permission. The other day, she came home with a bad sunburn, and her skin was peeling, and I had enough, and wrote that they were racist and segregating kids, and that she could get skin cancer because they're forcing her in the sun without sunscreen. I sent the lady in charge articles about cancer, and that black people can get sunburned, and sent her names of the workers who enforced this. She said that they were under her orders, and that she was right because we have more protection against this and said that I was blowing this out of proportion, and asked me to take my review down. I am seriously thinking of contacting a news channel about this. 
My friend said that I'm being a Karen for complaining publicly, and that black people have melanin, so that gives them lots of protection that other kids don't have. Edit, we live in the deep south. Well, that explains it, doesn't it? Obviously not everyone in the deep south, but hey, racism is still alive and well in this world still. Apparently with daycare workers too. Sure, melanin does protect the skin somewhat from sunburns, but it's not equipped to deal with what the kids are being subjected to here. Complaining publicly, getting those racists in the facility fired, and getting an audit into that company is sorely needed. And I encourage OP to go to the news about this. This is genuinely disgusting behaviour by them, akin to torture. How can you justify leaving kids in the sun all day like that? No sunscreen? Like, that's so cruel in every way. And it does sound like torture in the fact that the kid's skin is peeling off and they weren't allowed to go into the shade. How do you justify that? Please fight for yours and these kids, OP. Not the a-hole. Now in the comments, Ambitious Mess 8901 says, Not the a-hole. That place is horrible. What the F? I would definitely not send my daughter back there if I was you, and do not take down the review. Other parents need to know so they won't go through this as well. And OP replies, I'm taking her out soon. I'm just looking for somewhere close by since we live in a rural area. I really hope you find a good place. This entire situation is just sickening to me. That place should be shut down. As someone with dark skin, I agree. Just because we don't burn as easy as people with lighter skin doesn't mean we don't burn or get skin cancer or just feel plain uncomfortable in the heat. This pisses me off to no end. Imagine putting children in that scenario. Not only are they harming the children with darker skin, they're also teaching all the children that the segregation is okay. Also, dark-skinned people are less likely to detect skin cancer early as skin changes may not be as visible. So like, you might not burn as fast as an Irish redhead, but you also might not spot a new mole as fast. Not the a-hole. Hit them where it hurts and make a complaint to the state licensing board. Do this. They are endangering children. There is no excuse whatsoever for their behaviour and then to double down on the ignorance. Not the a-hole, but make sure this doesn't happen to any more kids. Jumping on this to add that even if they believed that black people didn't need sunscreen, a black person, or parent of a black person, telling them that they need it should suffice for them to apply it. If whitesplaining is a word, this is definitely a definition of it. And putting all the black kids in the hot sun so they're uncomfortable while the white kids get the cool shade? There are like eight levels of racism going on here, and that daycare needs to be dealt with. Posted by user, Random Am I the A-Hole, titled, Am I the A-Hole for calling my wife a helicopter mom after she called the place my son applied at? My son James just turned 16 this month, and he decided he wanted to start working a part-time job just to have some extra spending money and to start saving up. He hasn't had much luck. I doubt many places are interested in hiring a teen with limited hours to work. James started to get annoyed with my wife after he found out she submitted a few applications for him. We had a whole talk about that and reminded her that James wanted to do this job hunting on his own. Over a week ago, James applied at this local clothing store that he likes to shop at since he's familiar with the place. He was told the usual line when he spoke to the hiring manager. We'll review your application and give you a call. He was really hoping to get this one, but after a week, he figured they were not going to call. Earlier, when I got home, there was some tension. James was locked in his room, and my wife seemed upset. I spoke to him first, and he told me my wife called the store earlier and berated the hiring manager for giving my son false hope and lying to him about giving him a call when they clearly weren't going to. James heard the call from upstairs because she was yelling, and when he confronted my wife, she said she was just angry on his behalf, that they should have called him anyways to let him know that he didn't get the job. But obviously, they are only going to call applicants they actually plan to hire. 
He's angry at my wife right now for interfering, and now he's going to be too embarrassed to go into that store again since they know who he is. I also confronted my wife, and she kept saying that she was only looking out for him. However good her intentions were, I told her she needed to stop being a helicopter mom here, or she could ruin opportunities for him by interfering. My wife went to our room and shut the door. James wants an apology for her embarrassing him, and my wife says that she did nothing wrong and is mad at me for calling her that. She said that I was the one being an ass for not caring if our son finds a job, and it's not fair for me to criticize her when she at least gives a damn. With the way she's being right now, I have to ask if maybe I went too far and was an a-hole for calling her a helicopter mom. Nothing wrong with calling it like you see it. She was, for all intents and purposes, being a helicopter mom, and you're just working on shutting down those shenanigans. Calling and berating a workplace for not hiring your child is cringe and embarrassing, and I look down on her for doing that. I would be dying on the inside if I had heard my own mother calling somewhere that I applied to and yelling at them for that. It gets you nowhere and just solidifies those workplaces' decisions not to hire you, since you obviously need your parents to stand up for you. On top of that, it just ruins his reputation with them whenever he goes back to these spots for just normal business matters. They're not going to look at him the same way again. They're going to see him as that kid with the insane helicopter Karen mom and judge him for that. Not a fair situation to put your child in, and I don't blame you for calling her that OP. Not the a-hole. Now in the comments, Waiter Man says, At least your son recognizes that his mother is way out of line. That saves you the worry that he will grow up to be weak and scared because of an overbearing mother. Whew. Not the a-hole. He needs to start putting his applications in without telling his mother where. She can't call if she doesn't know, unless she has a tracking program on his phone. Shouldn't really have to live like that though, should he? No, he shouldn't, but is the child of an overbearing mother, whose behaviour I could not change, only my own? Let me tell you that putting her on an information diet is one of the few things you can do while still living under the same roof and it doesn't sound like OP's situation quite rises to fleeing and going no contact. True. Sounds like the dad has his back too. I've never really thought of it like an information diet, but it's a great way to put it. I've always called it 20 questions. Try to answer all her questions without actually telling her anything. Not the a-hole. What your wife accomplished is everyone knowing your son as the guy whose mum calls and berates the manager for not hiring the son. What did she actually want to accomplish with her little shouting match? Angry on behalf of the son? Nah, that's a load of bull. She's actively interfering with your son's life, making her a helicopter parent. Absolutely agreed. My son is 13. He's been to all the camps at his local indoor skate rink. They pretty much promised him a job once he was old enough. Dude still has to go through interviews, submitting his non-existent resume. I'm not stepping in at all. He's pretty much promised a position I'm not involved. If little bruv Fs it up, we'll talk. I cannot fathom the entitlement of any parent getting involved in their kid's attempts at being independent. And edits, of course I'll help him with the interview techniques. Roleplay the interview. Help him make his resume. I just meant that I won't hold his hand and force this place to take him. This exactly. You support them and help them behind the scenes. Honestly, everyone is going to blow an interview at some point in their life. I'm guessing most of us have blown several interviews, not because we're necessarily awful candidates, but because acing interviews is a skill that needs to be developed and improved upon throughout your working years. The very best time to blow an interview is when you're a teenager. It sucks and it makes you feel bad, but it also gives you more information. What interviewers are looking for, how to behave during an interview, how to follow up afterwards. All the soft skills you can only get from trying, failing, and trying again. This is especially important for a teenager who's going to be applying for scholarships, grants, and bursaries, where part of the application process is an interview. 
You don't want your first interview experience to be one where several thousand dollars are riding on your performance. Posted by user Mum's Bracelet. Titled Am I the A Hole? Agreed to meet my dad to reconcile, but I was really there to get my mum's bracelet that he stole. So my dad and I, 25 male, aren't close, and I was never interested in having a relationship with him. He was the type of guy that was out all the time with his friends and never home. My mum divorced him when I was 12, and it got ugly. Sometime during the divorce, we came home and stuff was missing. Not his stuff, by the way, because that was cleaned out when he left. One of the stuff missing was my mum's bracelet that she kept in a small box under some stuff in the closet. The bracelet was super special to her. Her parents were toxic AF, but my mum was really close to her English teacher slash mentor in high school who was like a mum to her. Her teacher gave her that bracelet at her high school graduation, and my mum kept it all these years. My dad knew she treasured it, and who else would look in that specific place to take only a bracelet when there was other stuff in the house? She knew it was him too, but he always played dumb. The divorce was finalized, and we didn't see my dad after that, and my mom never got it back. Last June, she got the corona and didn't make it. I was heartbroken over that. Still am, I guess. Glad at least that me, my sister, and my stepdad have each other for support. Around October, my sister told me dad wants to talk to me, so she gave him my number. He apologized for being a crap dad, and asked if we could meet to talk at his place. I was ready to straight up say no, but then I remembered he stole her bracelet, and maybe this was a chance to get it back. I've asked my sister before to push him about it since they talk, but she only asked him once and left it at that. I decided I could handle one visit just to see if he had it, so I told him I'd hear him out. So yeah, I met at his place. We caught up on stuff, he told me his sorry story about being immature and too focused on stuff that wasn't important than being a dad or whatever. I ended up bringing up the bracelet and how important that was to me since my mum's not here anymore. He still kept trying to act like it wasn't him, until I said the only way I would consider having a father-son relationship is if he just stopped with that and gave me my mum's bracelet. He finally gave in, and thank God he actually kept it instead of throwing it out. He apologised for taking it, and knew he was being super childish. I was just happy to have it back, but mad my mum didn't get it before she died. I never guaranteed my dad a relationship, I just said that I'd consider it but I already made up my mind and I don't want anything with him. It's been months since our meeting and my sister is pissed because my dad is disappointed I haven't talked to him. She says I was a huge piece of crap for making him think we'd reconcile. My only goal was getting the bracelet back and I wouldn't have talked to him in the first place if it wasn't for that, so that's why I wonder if I'm the a-hole. My sister is biased here since she was little when they split and has a different version of him. I think he got what was coming. Sure, it was deceptive for you to have taken it from him, but he did worse by taking it from your mother in the first place and then dragging on, pretending like he didn't take it. He's a terrible person and doesn't deserve to have a father-son relationship with you if you don't want one with him. Simple as that. You did right by your mum taking it back, and it's a tragedy she couldn't have it again before she passed. Not the a-hole OP. Now in the comments, Son of a Gunderson says, Not the a-hole. He sounds like a terrible person. And the fact that he initially tried to deceive you about it shows that he hasn't improved much, if at all. Also, I'm so sorry for the loss of your mother. That's awful. Glad you have people close to you for support. My heart broke when I found out your mother passed. At least you can cherish your mum's treasure as a memento. Not the a-hole, of course. Agreed, not the a-hole. Hijacking your comment to provide some advice to OP. If you're going to wear the bracelet at all, bring it to a jeweler to put a safety chain on it so if the clasp ever breaks, the bracelet doesn't fall off. I lost my dad's bracelet that way, and I am still heartbroken. Luckily, my mum gave me a necklace, but 
obviously never wanted to lose the bracelet in the first place. I now put safety chains on all my bracelets. So sorry for your loss. Take time to heal, and don't feel any pressure to have relationships with people who don't bring anything positive to your life. Not the a-hole. He would have given you the bracelet right away if he was truly remorseful and wanted a fresh start. He's still a crap human, you don't owe him anything. If OP meant that as a test, crap daddy failed right there. That's what to tell sis. OP didn't mean it as a test, but if dad had come forward with it, not lied to start, then it might have left that door open a little. Oops. Not the a-hole completely justified. Not the a-hole in the slightest, and my heart breaks for you and your mum who never got to have her treasured possession back before she died. Your father is a bare-faced liar, vindictive, he certainly did this for no other reason than to hurt your mum, and on top of that, a manipulative person turning your sister against you while you were both grieving. You had every right to get that bracelet back, and you only had to be slightly dishonest because of his extremely blatant dishonesty. I'm so sorry that you are going through this. Hopefully your sister will grow and gain more empathy for your perspective with time. And OP replies, he admitted he was drunk and feeling petty about the divorce when he went to the house to take it. But like, he had all these years to give it back. I just wish that she got it back before that, but she didn't want to include the cops since it was going to be more drama on us. So he drove himself to your house drunk as well? He's not sounding any better, that's for sure. That was a regular thing for him back then. Posted by user Fault Fabulous, titled, Am I the a-hole for not letting my neighbor's kids play on my lawn? So I'm a man in my early 30s. I'm an MD, dermatologist, and recently I decided to move out of my apartment to a place with more space, especially a lawn, so that my dogs, I have two, can have more space. I spent a lot of my time in my clinic, private practice, and due to that, the two of them spend a lot of time alone. That being said, more space would definitely be advantageous for them. I searched for quite a while before I found a house that I liked. It had a big lawn, and I ended up buying it. It's in a very tiny neighborhood in my city, and quite a calm one, which is always great. I've moved to this house about a week ago, and haven't had any real troubles at all. Everyone seemed friendly enough. Last Friday, however, when I got home and went to the lawn to play with my dogs, a woman came to knock on my door. She's one of the neighbours and is part of their association. I'm not and I have no plans of ever joining them, but they don't harm me so it's fine. I went to answer the door and see what she needed. She was pretty nice at first, welcoming me to the neighbourhood and all that. But afterwards, she said, and I quote, So, I know you're new but we would like to ask you to keep your dogs inside your house when you're out. The kids like to play on the house's lawns, and they're afraid of your dogs, so you need to put them inside when you're not at home. For a moment, I didn't quite believe what I heard, and asked her to repeat, and she indulged me like this was a common occurrence. I just told her flat out, No, the lawn is for the dogs, your kids have no business going to my property, nor do you have any grounds to make that demand. She did not take that well. She told me she was going to contact the association and all other kinds of stuff. I just told her flat out that she could call the Pope for all I cared. It was my property and my say in it stays. Oh boy, how wrong was I to say that. She left fuming and apparently, throughout the weekend, started to spread rumours about me to the neighbours. People who would smile at me or say good morning no longer even looked at my face. Honestly, I'm more pissed than anything, but seeing this many people believing my actions were that of an a-hole, it makes me wonder if I'm not in the wrong. I mean, they were just kids. I could have let them play in the lawn. Anyway, I decided to ask Reddit for help here. Am I the a-hole? Should I have just let them do what they want? And edit... Just a note that I should have put beforehand, my lawn, which is my backyard, is already fenced. 
OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. I think I might have acted too hastily by just denying any kind of compromise that I could have tried to make. I do feel bad for the kids, as the house I own has the biggest lawn in the neighborhood, and that's honestly a good space for the kids to play. That's mainly what makes me feel like I'm an a-hole, but the obvious animosity I've been getting from everyone else also doesn't help. It's your house and your rules. These people don't get to decide when you let your dogs out in your lawn on a property that you specifically bought to benefit your dogs. That's just ridiculous. Associations can be a lot to handle, and I'm just glad that you're not a part of it. That would have been fun dealing with this had you had the wrath of an HOA come down on you. Sure, the community can believe what it wants, but at the end of the day, you didn't actually do anything wrong here. So, not the a-hole. Now in the comments, Cato95BC says, You are categorically not the a-hole. No, the lawn is for the dogs. Your kids have no business going in my property, nor do you have any ground to make that demand. What you said is bang on. The entitlement of certain parents never ceases to amaze me. It's your property. Even if you didn't have dogs, you might just want peace and quiet. This is before we even get to possible legal issues about being aware that others are using your property as a red center for their kids. How to avoid pariah status in the neighborhood is another matter, but this person is a toxic a-hole. The only answer I know to this is for OP to put the real story out there on Facebook or whatever, putting the emphasis on her entitlement and toxicity. Not the a-hole OP, but that's probably your best bet to setting the story right. Let's not forget about the puppers. The best way to take full control over and send a clear message is to build a nice tall fence. One that strictly adheres to the bylaws of your association, of course. So no one can try and fine you or have you take it down, winky face. And not even have to worry about the possibility or liability of kids on your property. Maybe some signs with not-so-subtle warnings to any potential trespassers, because that's all they really are. Not the a-hole, that woman is insane. You have a fenced-in lawn on your property, that is your space, yours and your dog's space. To say, please don't use your property which you bought so that my kids can use it? I mean, she has to be literally insane to think that you'd accommodate that. My advice is to find out if there is a community message board or Facebook page. Go there and explain like this. I'm new to the neighborhood, and I want to introduce myself. I'm frequently out with my dogs on my front yard. They are extremely well trained and friendly, as am I, so please come by and say hello if you're passing. I look forward to meeting you all. I did receive a request to keep my dogs off their own lawn so that a neighbor's child could use my lawn as if it was their own. I'm sorry to say that I can't honor this request as I moved here to give my dogs the space, exercise, and attention they deserve. I hope you can all understand why I felt this request to not use my lawn was unreasonable. And I'm going to reply to my own comment to add that, because of the pandemic, my neighbor's dogs are my son's best friends. We have a shared lawn outside our condo that has basically become a dog park. My toddler runs around with them, shares food, plays catch, etc. The idea that this crazy lady's kids are scared of your dogs, and therefore your dogs should stay inside, I just can't get over that. She should teach her kids how amazing dogs are, and then politely ask if the kids can play with a dog sometimes. Edit to add, I told my husband about this post and he said, I'll be right back. I'm going to ask our neighbors to stop parking in their own garage because I want to put a pool table in it. Posted by user Lady Jane, Am I the A Hole? Titled Am I the A Hole for telling the people at work to call me by my name? So I, 23 female, have eccentric parents. I'm named after a historical figure, their title plus their first name. I'm going to say here that my name is Lady Jane. After being embarrassed by this name all my life, I've grown to sort of love it. Not that many people will understand that, which I guess is fine. Anyway, at work, 
Everyone decided Lady Jane is ridiculous and they would call me Jane. But there's another girl at work named Jane. I just told them to call me by my proper name or just Lady. They wouldn't do that, so they started calling me by my last name, which is unpronounceable to anyone who isn't Polish. I've heard so many variants, none being right, and I'm sick of them. This has basically all been decided by this woman, Greta. I told Greta to tell everyone else to either call me one, Lady Jane, or two, Lady. And she told me that I'm being way too aggressive about a minor issue that they've already solved. It may be solved to her, but I don't like hearing my last name butchered. She said my first name is too funny for the workplace, and to stop any jokes, I should keep being called by my last name. I said if I don't get referred to by my proper name, I simply won't respond. She said that's unprofessional, which it admittedly is. Am I the a-hole? It's only as unprofessional as you are being treated yourself. If they don't want to call you by the name that you prefer, then they don't get an answer until they use it. You wouldn't expect someone superior to you to be happy about calling them by a first name or a nickname, so why would someone else want to be disrespected in the same regard? Yes, it's a problem when you don't respond to them, OP, but at that point, it's all but victim blaming and shaming for not accepting being treated as other or less than. You shouldn't be treated as less than and not referred to by your name just because someone else has that name. That's ridiculous and childish by your workplace and shame on them. Not the a-hole. Now in the comments, Lenny Pixie says, Not the a-hole. I have co-workers with ridiculous names, like Princess or Perfect, and I call them by their names. May I add that your parents are a-holes too? People really do not think before naming their children at how difficult their lives can be, and you're a great example. Agreed with not the a-hole, but not for the parents. OP doesn't sound too bothered by her name now. She actually said she loves it. OP, I would start adding Hansel and to the beginning of your co-workers' names. I mean, it turned out okay in this instance, but it doesn't always and it's not like the parents really knew in advance that she would be fine with it. They just got lucky. Not responding is unprofessional, but not nearly as unprofessional as solving someone else's name. Not the a-hole. She should simply repeat her proper name and wait for them to say it, using the proper nod to indicate such. If they do not, she can repeat her proper name and wait again. Eventually they will catch on. For some reason, a lot of people use a nickname for my name that I do not, so I do this a lot. Nobody can pronounce my last name either, so that's out. My first name is common and quite easy to pronounce, so I don't get why folks invent a nickname for it without seeing if it's one that I use. And Perky Blonde Chick says, Not the a-hole, and if your wish is not respected, report them to HR. This is offensive on many levels, and you have standing to sue. Your name is your name, and other people don't get to change it to convenience themselves. This problem has already been experienced by many people of colour and other ethnicities, and you will find case law addressing it. And as for unprofessional, they are being unprofessional. Your name is Lady Jane, not Jane, not Susan, not Girl, not Wisner Whiskey, Lady Jane, just like Mary Ann or Sue Ellen. Posted by user Salt Air Savannah, titled, Am I the a-hole for assuming which name belonged to the human and which one belonged to the dog? So my mum lives in a 55 plus community. I lived with her for five months last year, so I got to know a lot of the neighbours well. It's a new community, so a bunch of people have moved in since I lived there. I moved out of state, and I was visiting my mum for a long weekend this past week. While walking my dog, I had seen a woman and her dog a few times, and was friendly to her, making small talk. One day, I ran into a neighbour that I knew, and she pointed to a house and asked if I'd met Dorothy and Squeaks yet. I said I think I had talked to her, but hadn't met officially to introduce myself. 
Later that day, I saw the woman and her dog and introduced myself and said, And you're Dorothy, right? The lady made an offended face and said, Dorothy is my dog. My name is Squeaks. She walked off, and the rest of the time that I was at my mom's, every time I saw her, she gave me dirty looks every time I passed. Am I the a hole? Edit. After talking to neighbours, apparently Squeaks is a nickname that she has to go by. I'm sure assumptions make an ass out of you and me, but surely she's not actually mad about that one. I feel like if given this choice, most anyone would choose Dorothy if they're not intentionally trying to annoy the old lady. This kind of makes her an a-hole for reacting that way instead of laughing it off in good nature and correcting you instead. That's just rude of her to do that to you. I don't blame you for coming here to question it because I would feel the same way. Not the a-hole. Now in the comments, Stoat King says, Not the a-hole. A perfectly reasonable assumption, lol. Anyway, Squeaks is just her nickname. Her real name is Bowser. This is really ridiculous, lol. You have to actually be giving negative Fs to go by Squeaks, lol. My free comedian doesn't go below zero. That one chick you know says, I'm going with not the a-hole. That was a totally reasonable assumption to make. Probably you're assuming it irritated Squeaks because you are almost definitely not the first person to make the mistake, but she shouldn't have taken it out on you. Why would she think that anyone would assume her name is Squeaks, lol? Exactly what I thought, and if she's going to go by Squeaks and call her dog Dorothy, somehow I doubt this is the first or last time this lady will see this exact situation come up. She ought to get used to it and stop wasting energy getting offended. Oh man, the things people choose to get upset about. Not the a-hole. I find it sad that she's making her life so much harder on herself by being upset about this. Like, if I was a lady with a dog in a nice retirement community and had chosen these names, I would treat it like an elaborate prank that I'm playing on everyone, and then make a joke and laugh when someone realizes the mistake, and possibly make them squirm a bit just for fun but obviously like for a minute or two only. It's not a microaggression, like you're obtusely misnaming her, like when people keep using dead names, or refusing to learn the proper pronunciation of non-white sounding names, or anything like that. You made an honest and very reasonable mistake. And Shizzlemu says, Not the a-hole. I love my dog more than most people, and would be happy for you to call me Bean, lol. Seriously though, this woman needs to relax a little. Also, what is a bee community? I too want to know what a bee community is. Retired people who also keep bees? And OP says, Oops, that was supposed to say new. The community is just over a year old. Posted by user, Informal Collection 1. Titled... Am I the a-hole for kicking my wife's friend out of our wedding after she refused to remove a piercing? So the backstory is that my wife, 25 female, has a friend, 25 female, that I, 29 male, don't get along with too well. I met her friend while I was dating my wife and we didn't click too well, but we were still friendly and respectable to one another. Unfortunately, a year ago while we were having a get-together, we got into a huge argument and things haven't been the same between me and the friend since. I won't go into the details of the argument, since in and of itself it's not too relevant, but it was really bad and put us on horrible terms. Nonetheless, my wife still wanted to invite her to our wedding since they were good friends and I agreed. It was a medium-ish wedding, about a hundred people, and per usual, it was formal. That leads me to the next part. When her friend arrived at the wedding, I noticed she had a nose piercing on the side of her nose, and I was instantly annoyed. I'm a bit biased because I do think piercings are trashy in general, but I think anyone is free to wear them, but not at weddings. Sometime later, after the ceremony, I went up to the friend and asked for a word privately. I told her to remove her piercing immediately, or she has to leave. Of course, she started acting like a bitch and cursed at me. 
I remained calm nonetheless and told her she is no longer welcome and must leave. She tried to go and speak to my wife, but I blocked her and told her where the exit was. She was crying, and after more yelling and getting some looks from people passing by, she left. We were in a different room from where the main event was taking place, so luckily the wedding wasn't disturbed. Obviously there was fallout in the coming days, and my wife was annoyed with me that I kicked her friend out. Since the event was formal, I think it was appropriate to remove any piercings. Someone I know has tattoos, and he even covered them up. I might be the a-hole for kicking the friend out without my wife's approval, but I did give her a chance to remove the piercing, and she refused to do that simple task. Yes, you suck for kicking your wife's friend out. I don't understand what universe you think you live in, because in this one, piercings are normal. They're definitely something that's considered formal in my experience. You're an A-grade asshole for kicking that friend out of the wedding without your wife's permission, without even a semblance of good reason to do so. She literally did nothing besides wear a piercing, and you've acted like she's spat in your mother's face. That's abhorrent behaviour. You're the a-hole, OP. In the comments, Fake Mona Lisa says, You're the a-hole. So, how badly did you want to screw this woman, and how harshly did she reject you? because I cannot imagine any other circumstance where a man would be so hyper-focused on something so small and insignificant after literally just getting married. How embarrassing for your wife that instead of being in the moment, happy for being surrounded by 100 of your closest friends and family, during a pandemic, you fixated on a piece of jewellery in another woman's nose to the point where you had just had to make a scene over it. That's what was on your mind right then? That is the thing that was the most important to you. Someone's nose ring. Yikes. Hopping on the top comment to add what OP says the original argument was about. Basically, I said that Black Lives Matter should change to a different name because BLM, Bureau of Land Management, had that acronym for decades prior, and it was unfair to them. She disagreed and started getting abusive with me, and eventually insults and yelling ensued. I cannot even with OP. OP is lucky somebody married him with all the red flags he keeps dropping round. The flag is basically a siren at this point. But this is assuming she doesn't feel the same. Kinda hard to hide this stuff. Alarms can lead you to something just as easily as tell you where not to go. Dude, he sounds fine. A likely racist guy who doesn't like your friends and ignores you at your wedding to corner them in a room alone and yell at them over what they do with their body? Sign me up. Yeah, I can totally see why she felt that he was the one. What a piece of work. OP's poor wife should expect to keep losing friends, as they all wonder why on earth she's subjecting them to this massive a-hole. FYI to OP, nose rings are not trashy. It depends on the culture. In some cultures, this can be part of dressing formal. So once again, you're coming off as a racist, who I guess thinks if anyone else doesn't dress exactly like his version of a wasp, then they are trashy. Also, OP, you're incredibly rude and judgmental. This is not a real issue. Literally no one cared but you. If I saw someone with a nose piercing at a formal affair, I wouldn't bat an eyelash or think they were rude. If I found out the groom blocked them off from talking to the bride and kicked them out, I'd think the groom was awful and I'd be talking all about it to the other friends. Not in a good way. You are such a petty, vengeful little man, you had to bully a woman for basically no reason and kick her out, causing drama at your own wedding. Good luck to your wife, like damn. If you had any decency or shame, apologize right now and several more times as required. You're the a-hole. You're the a-hole. It's 2021 and piercings are pretty normal. The issue is, you don't like this person and took it upon yourself to kick her out despite your wife wanting her there. Classic a-hole behaviour. Jumping on this comment to add that the bride was probably wearing earrings as well as a lot of guests, and they are considered piercings too. I bet he didn't go around telling people to remove their earrings. You're the a-hole. 
First off, your behavior is far more trashy than any piercing could ever be. Secondly, it's pretty clear why you and the friends don't get along. It's because you're a controlling and judgmental a-hole. Thirdly, piercings are appropriate for formal events and always have been. And fourthly, you had no right to kick your wife's friend out. This is petty, spiteful, childish behavior. Posted by user Rhonda Sucks. Titled, Am I the a-hole for not letting a student leave school at dismissal? So I'm not a teacher, I'm a secretary at a high school. I manage students' attendance, notes, parent calls, etc. As a high school secretary, I know about every student. I'm good at staying on top of them. However, there's been a senior girl who's been stubborn and has no problem saying no to anyone, which is surprising to me considering how quiet and polite she's always been for the past few years. In January, we had to have our students take a test called STAR testing, not to be mistaken with S-T-A-A-R testing, containing reading and math, and it should only take an hour to complete. All students have an hour study hall period plus their lunch period. There is no excuse for them not to do it. The school district receives funding for these, so it is very important we have these in for the winter. Our staff have been tracking down students who haven't done the test. This girl didn't do the test, along with several other students, especially the online ones. A teacher of hers told us, as in me and the principals, that the girl said she will do the test. A week later from then, we told all the students they only have one week left to do the tests, but not enough students did them in order for us to submit the data for eligibility for the funds. So, two weeks later from that point, earlier this past week, the girl came into school, and as she was walking into the building, I told her she needed to do the star testing. She was walking, but looked back at me and gave me a nod. Later that day, she was about to leave the building, but I was still at the main entrance, and I stopped her at the doorway and told her she still needed to do the test. She stopped and turned around and said, I'm not going to do the tests. I was shocked, and I told her she had to do them. She said that they don't have any impact on her grades or graduation, and that they're a waste of time on her schoolwork, and that the state needs to find a different way for the school to receive funds. We never told the students that the testing was how we received eligibility for funding. Teachers are supposed to tell the students that the tests are to mark where they are in their learning. We strictly do not tell them about the funding. While this information was true, I told her that the test marks where she, as a student, is in her learning process, and that I don't know how she came to that conclusion. One of the assistant principals overheard us talking and asked the girl what made her think we got funds from the student tests, and she said that one of her teachers included the funding as a reason to do the tests, and that she already knew about the funding for testing since elementary school, and that she's never done any state testing unless it's the SATs. She tried to leave, but we held her back because we wanted to find out who told her this information. She got mad, and she's not saying, and that she's 18 and can leave if she wants to, and that we can't hold her past dismissal time. She ran away from the school, so we had to call her parents. Her parents said that her daughter has her permission to not participate in the tests, and that she is furious that we kept her past dismissal for 20 minutes, trying to get her to do that test. She claims to have a big workload of assignments this year, and that she's very busy, and then she has to work in the evening, so the study hall and her lunch period are her only hours of working on her assignments, and that the only reason she did the test in the fall was because she didn't want to argue with her pregnant teacher because they got along, and didn't want to put stress on her by resisting. My school has a bad reputation due to numerous incidents a few years back. We need our numbers to go up. Last year, the students didn't give us top numbers, and the principal was very disappointed in the morning announcements over the intercom, so these tests are also important for good reports in our school, as well as funding. The problem is, students are allowed to opt out of these tests, but we don't make that public given that most kids won't question adults who say it's required, and that they'll just do what they're told. Our school is going back full-time next week, so we will be seeing a lot more of this girl. 
I think you know you're in the wrong, and you're pestering this girl. Why you came to Reddit for sympathy for this one and being completely transparent about the situation when most posts are anything but honest is beyond me, but I can appreciate it nonetheless. You are the a-hole for holding her past the dismissal time for a whole 20 minutes and grilling her when you know that's deplorable and a really bad look for admin to be doing. That's not your job, and you should feel bad for pressuring someone younger than you, and you know that you're in a position of power over them, and you are taking advantage of that. You even admit to the kids, like, that they don't question you guys because of that power over them. This whole post just reeks of manipulation and problems that you should be solving yourself. Leave the poor girl alone, and don't manipulate students or accost them. Pretty plain and simple, that one. You're the a-hole. Now in the comments, Pretty Little Toy says, Yes, you're the a-hole. She is completely right. You have no right to hold her against her will, especially since you have no idea if she can even get home or anything if she's held back. Kids should not be forced to use their breaks for schoolwork, especially if it has no impact on their actual grades or ability to graduate. Wow. I can't even believe you tried to call her mother too. She is legally an adult. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely agree. This is insane. Also, has anyone noticed that OP's anonymous name is Rhonda Sucks? How much do you want to bet this unhinged a-hole used the student's name as her username for this? Talk about petty. I think this is the student. Either way, the assistant was the a-hole. I'm an assistant at a school and wouldn't think in any way that I have the right to keep an 18-year-old after school on my authority. It sounds as though it's A or the student to me too. You're the a-hole. You tried to hold an 18-year-old girl against her will to force her to do a test for funding when her parents opted her out of taking the test. What the hell is wrong with you? Yes, but first they lied to her. Yep. That just makes OP even more of an a-hole. You can tell the OP only values blind obedience because they said the girl used to be nice and quiet, but now is apparently in the bad books for being able to say no and not succumbing to pressure. OP, you're the worst sort of person to be anywhere near education or children. You should want them to form their own opinions and have a strong sense of self. Yikes. And Sredenk says, You're the a-hole. As a staff member, you should know better than to block a door to stop a student from leaving. Unless the student is attacking another student, you should never stop a student from leaving the building. It is unfortunate that funding comes from these tests, but that's not the student's fault. You can't force them to take the test. In fact, many states allow students and parents to officially opt out of testing. She could have found out that the funding comes from state tests anywhere. It's not exactly a secret. It's all over the news every year when they review scores in my state. You are very lucky the parent here didn't do more. Honestly, if this was my child, I would be complaining to the school board. You and the admin overstepped big time. Posted by user Sarah Kess. Titled... Am I the a-hole for telling my friend I'd rather be seen as a fake and miserable person knowing I have real-life success than be an authentic loser, like her, after she said the following? So I tell my friend almost everything. Last year, I told her my fiancé and I were arguing a lot and almost broke up. Then at the end of the year, we decided to get married. My friend didn't come to the wedding because she says she doesn't support us getting married after finding out we argue so much. Fine. Whatever. I moved on from that. Then, I recently told her I'm gonna start getting paid to post products on Instagram, and her response was something along the lines of, Influencers and people who post ads are fake and lame, and most are miserable but post a picture-perfect life. So we got into a little debate about that where I told her that, First, it's their job to post pictures like that, and good for them if they found a way to make extra money. We don't know if they're miserable because we don't know them personally. I'm sure some are happy. She then goes on to personally attack me by saying that I post lovey-dovey pics of my relationship, when in reality, 
I argue with my partner and that that's lying. I responded that every relationship has ups and downs. We argue sometimes, but we also have good times. So yes, I post pics of the good times, and am I supposed to update the world when we're arguing too? Then she called me inauthentic and said that I lied to someone about my career. She didn't even see the convo I had with that person. So anyway, I screenshotted the convo to show her that I didn't lie at all. I told the person that my career is stressful. I didn't act like it's the best career ever. Anyway, I ended up telling her I'd rather be seen as fake and miserable knowing that I have real success, real happiness, etc. than to be an authentic loser like her. Because she keeps talking about being authentic. And also, just for some background, she still isn't married to her boyfriend but wants to and is always telling me how she wants to get married. She also has a crap job that she's overeducated for. So, am I the a-hole? I mean, she's the one that started attacking me, so I think she deserved it. I can't deal with this person. It was going so well, and then she's just like, I'm just going to start dropping bombs on her. Yeah, I'd rather have real happiness and success than be an authentic loser like you. God, what a, what a zinger that is. Yeah, you're overqualified for your job. It's a crap job. Man, you gotta hate your life. That, I bet that makes you miserable. You're not even married to your boyfriend. God, that's just... <laughs> you suck. You're an authentic loser. I really want to say that OP is the a-hole in this one, but it's, it's a clear everyone sucks here to me because, you know... Both of them are being petty, both of them are throwing insults at each other, and, you know, you're entitled to, to your own opinions, but it doesn't stop you from being an asshole. And I'm sure you can post your arguments online to Instagram if you want, but really, you don't air your dirty laundry like that, do you? I feel like Instagram is the place for lovey-dovey pictures of your relationship and your life. Sure, you can post it, but I don't know if it's socially acceptable to do so. If the friend doesn't support you guys getting married when you two obviously are fine with getting married, that's a her problem and she can't decide whether you guys get to marry or not. She can decide not to come to the wedding, but she sucks for doing that. That's a clear stance of defiance against both of you and I don't see why you'd continue to be friends with her after that. Even if I had a tiff with my friends, I would still come to their wedding because I support them and I am their friend in thick and thin, in, you know, sickness and health and everything. So really, I don't have space for pettiness like this friend has shown, but I also don't have any tolerance for this OP. They've obviously shown themselves to be an asshole. So I'm going with everyone sucks here for this one. Now in the comments, Aromatic Ice 968 says, Everyone sucks here. She shouldn't be judging someone for how they make their money unless said person is actually exploiting others, which influencing is not doing. She had no right to speak to you that way, and she sounds like an entirely insufferable person, crapping on someone else's happiness and claiming it to be inauthentic because it didn't come about in a way she approves of. She is imposing her personal definitions of what's right, wrong, worthwhile, etc. upon you, insisting that you must live by her metrics instead of your own to be recognized as having worthwhile achievements. I don't blame you for not wanting to be friends with her anymore. Real friends support their friends' joys, even if they aren't the same things they want for themselves. You suck for giving her background as evidence she's a loser. You are being judgy about the fact that she isn't married. Marriage is no indication of a woman's success or failure at life, we're no longer living in 1954, or for not having a great job. In these times, many people are in jobs they're overqualified for. That's a reality of the age. Neither element you've identified here make her any sort of a loser. And you rather suck for suggesting otherwise. The thing that makes her a loser is her obnoxious attitude toward you. Anyone who enjoys their life does their best, lives out their values and makes the most of their circumstances and finds contentment, has won at life. It has nothing to do with marriage or career. Being married or making a lot of money does not indicate real success. It depends if the person is truly happy or not. If they're living out their values and making the most of their circumstances, whatever those may be. 
a single woman who spent her entire career happily serving burgers and enjoying her life, friends, community, etc., can be the biggest winner in the world, whilst a married millionaire CEO can be an absolute loser if she's miserable and has no gratitude for the blessings she has. Everyone sucks here. Two wrongs don't make a right. You both sound hella judgmental, and this seems like a toxic friendship. Right? I can see why they are friends. They're both assholes. This is badly written high school drama. Everyone sucks here. I saw on another Reddit sub, they said they're a therapist. I would hate to go to a therapist that called me a loser, lol. Everyone sucks here. Both you and your friend believe you're better than others based on status or authenticity. And OP replies, I would never call my patients or clients losers. You think all therapists are perfect? They're humans too. They may very well be giving you advice or helping you with a problem that they have themselves. Yikes, OP. Yikes. Posted by user CStyle8531. Titled, Am I the a-hole for submitting an inappropriate, naughty question at a couple's drinking game? Some background. I'm a 29-year-old man. My wife is 24, and every couple of weeks, we gather up with some friends on a Skype call to chat and have some drinks. Occasionally, we'll play a game that has somewhat morphed over the years, which basically comes down to us thinking up the most outrageous questions and having to drink if we can't answer them. Everybody puts questions into a pot and everybody answers, or drinks. In total, we played this game with six people this week. The other relevant people I'll call Chuck and Mary. After about an hour of drinking and talking, my question got selected at random. The question was, if you could sleep with someone other than your husband or wife, who would you pick? Chuck immediately looked at Mary and clearly got pretty upset. The thing is, Mary had had an affair late last year, and they were working through it. I didn't exactly forget about this when I made the question, but the question that we put into the hat are always no holds barred. We've had, have you ever had an STI, to have you ever paid for sex, as questions. Mary awkwardly chose to drink when it was her turn, and soon after it, they made a lame excuse and logged off. Apparently my question picked at a scab that had not fully healed. Later that night, Chuck sent me a really nasty message, blaming me for the fight. I said it looked more like Mary's fault considering she was the one who planted the damn landmine that we all have to consider now, and they're both really angry at me. My wife is super non-confrontational, so I'm afraid that she's just agreeing with me to avoid what she's afraid may be an argument. I'd like a more neutral perspective, considering the context, did I push it too far? And as is always repeated on subs like this, especially relationship advice, if you're someone that says, oh my god, people just can't stand me because I'm so edgy and I just tell the truth and I don't give a crap, you're an asshole. I'm sorry to say it. Like, if you believe that you're just really blunt about things and that's off-putting for people, it's probably true. You can have a no-holds-barred style of questions that you put in these games here, but don't be surprised that it pisses people off because that sort of stuff does piss people off. And some people do have events like this in their lives where they stay with partners that cheat. This happens, it is something that you have to be careful of, because in all reality, yes, they started the fights and everything there, but that fight wouldn't have happened if you didn't start it with that question. I feel like Mary was in a rock and a hard place in this situation. Yeah, she's done wrong, but if she says anything, it's just going to make it worse. You can't not be an a-hole because of the fact that the game has clearly defined rules and that, oh, we've said more outrageous things before. You screwed up here, you didn't apologize for what you've done, and I wouldn't be surprised if they don't talk to you for a while, because that was offensive, and I think you're the a-hole. Now in the comments, Captain Jeff says, You're the a-hole. Context matters. You knew their situation, and you absolutely knew that this question may make them uncomfortable and cause an argument or other similar outcomes. 
You chose to do that anyway. That absolutely makes you an a-hole. Yeah, comes across as pretty malicious to me. You're the a-hole. And yeah, Opie admits to putting it in there maliciously by saying I didn't exactly forget about this when I made the question. If he had genuinely just forgotten or not considered that it might be weird with that history, then I'd say not the a-hole. But he admits that that wasn't the case and he chose to do it knowing it would hurt them or at the very least had the potential to hurt them, with the only excuse that the questions, in his mind at least, had always been free for all. This exactly. What else was OP trying to get out of the question than exactly what he got? You're the a-hole. Yeah, this. So telling his friends it's a landmine people have to avoid was dishonest. It wasn't something hidden he accidentally stumbled on, it was something highly visible he went out of his way to set off on purpose. Add to that that OP made no attempt to even express any kind of remorse, or, I really didn't intend for it to end up that way, I'm sorry, I totally forgot. He already admitted that it's not the case, but still might have made them feel a little bit better. Do I think OP wrote that question thinking, hee hee, this will put them in the hot seat and be juicy? No, not really. I do think OP just didn't care if it made them uncomfortable. You're the a-hole. Quote, I didn't exactly forget about this when I made the question, end quote. Seems like you planted this on purpose and then doubled down. Look, Mary's in the wrong for cheating, but if they're trying to work through it, why pour salt into the wounds? OP says, I intentionally made people uncomfortable. Are they the a-holes for becoming uncomfortable? Classic case of wanting it both ways. Your question was so edgy and provocative, so funny and clever of you. At the same time, it was just a neutral, innocent question that totally fit into your typical game. So you want credit for intentionally spicing up the game, but you don't want any blame for inadvertently ruining the night? Schrodinger's joke. Which one is it? Posted by user, throw am I the a-hole adopted. Titled, am I the a-hole for not letting my son's bio family meet him? For some background, my eldest son was the product of a very short-lived relationship, but his mother and I got along fairly well and were able to co-parent. When he was 12, his mum died unexpectedly, so he came into my care full time. Son also had a younger half-brother who was two, Social services didn't want to separate them, I didn't want him to be in the system, and had the resources for another child, so I took in the younger brother. I was told that his bio dad had parental rights terminated, but that his extended family had been informed of the situation and might ask for visitation. Nobody ever reached out. The boys are now 17 and 7, and the three of us are very close. Seven was adopted into the family just before Christmas last year. About a week ago, I received a message from a woman claiming to be a member of Seven's extended family, on the dad's side, asking if she could meet him. I pretty much told her that as he's been adopted, they'll have to wait until he's ready to meet them, but said that I would take her contact details for if and when he asks. She wasn't happy with this, and I've since received dozens of messages a day from Seven's relatives about how awful I am for keeping him away from them. I'm definitely of the opinion that they had their chance, and now that Seven is adopted, it's up to him whether or not he has a relationship with them. To date, he's only really ever asked about his mum and her family, never his dad's. Am I the a-hole? It's been such a long time that all these people have had to reach out to Seven, yet they've neglected building those bridges until now. I would definitely say that it's up to that child whether or not they want to meet this person and have a relationship with them, though that doesn't seem likely at all considering they have absolutely no clue who they are. I would say that OP is well within their rights morally here to deny that request, and that doesn't make them an a-hole for doing so. Continually pushing a parent to meet their adopted seven-year-old that you've not had a proper chat to their whole life seems really creepy, no matter how you phrase it. Definitely not something I'd be facilitating in this context if I was the parent. So yeah, I'm going not the a-hole for this one. 
Now in the comments, Miss Angelic Jones says, Not the a-hole. They had five years of time to make it clear they wanted to be in his life. You're doing the right thing by protecting him. 100% this. Five years was long enough for them to get involved. OP, not the a-hole. You're doing a great job standing up for your kids. With messages like that flooding your phone, I think your kid's probably better off not being in contact with them right now. Not only five years, but where were they five years ago when his mum died and he'd have gone into the system if OP hadn't taken him? Not the a-hole. I'm not sure how the family thinks that sending dozens of messages to you a day is going to make you want to let them see your son after seven years of no contact from them. Because of how they're harassing you, I would be cautious about setting up any type of visitation. Yeah, that would scare me away more than anything. Could they want something from you or him? Money, organ donation, etc.? Just seems strange that they'd pop out of the woodwork after five years and be that persistent. Exactly. Opie, please don't delete any of these messages. You may need them if these people escalate. You may also want to contact a lawyer to draw up a cease and desist letter, not the a-hole. Info. Why did it take five years for this person to contact you? And OP replies, no clue. I guess that's a question for them. I think it would have to be a pretty extraordinary reason to be valid. Very few of them exist. Only just found out that so-and-so had a child or was in and out of hospital battling a terminal illness for the last five years are pretty much the only ones that I can really think that might make their lateness acceptable. Even so, it's still your decision whether or not your son meets them. Not the a-hole. I was just curious as to their excuse for being so long in coming. I'll also accept deployed in a war zone and just now returned, and I'd accept a stint in prison as a valid excuse, but I'd need a lot more details before letting you around my kid if that was the excuse. And now on to the update. So after my verdict, I did what quite a few people suggested and contacted a lawyer. Thankfully, a pretty basic cease and desist letter seemed to stop the messages, though I am keeping a few business cards at hand just in case things take a turn. I know there were a lot of questions after my last post, and I only really found out answers to these when I asked Seventeen if he knew anything. He would have only been 11 or 12 at the time, and was spending every second week with me, but he filled in some gaps. As mentioned in my last post, I was aware of Seven's biological father having his rights terminated. For the sake of everyone involved, I won't disclose too many details, but a big part was a felony conviction. While the boy's mum didn't ask the courts to do this, she certainly didn't object to it, and didn't want to sustain contact between Seven and his father. Seventeen has now informed me that the paternal grandparents saw this as a huge betrayal, and tried several times to have a secret contact between Seven and his father. Eventually, they were also cut off. Based on this, I'm guessing that if I had said yes to him meeting his family, the buyer father would have entered the picture at some point. I'm still unsure what caused the sudden urgency in needing contact, since the father is still in prison. I'm also not entirely sure why they didn't want custody when he was two, but it probably either has to do with the parental rights being terminated, or them not wanting to deal with a toddler and go through all the requirements for taking care of him, the latter being Seventeen's theory. As to how they found my private Facebook, the only thing we can assume is they found a family members, either accidentally or on purpose, and went from there. Our surname is pretty uncommon, and I'm guessing they recognised it as Seventeen's surname. All photos of the boys have now been removed, and everyone's social media is on maximum privacy. It also seems that the messages were only ever directed at me. Obviously, this is all just educated guesses, but at the very least, I know a bit more now. At this stage, I would rather keep Seven's biological family limited to his mother's side, who he knows quite well. Seven doesn't know this happened, and I would like to keep it that way. I'd also like to thank everyone who gave their time to give me an outside perspective on the situation. It really did help to have outsiders tell me that I was not the a-hole. 
I hope you all enjoy the rest of the year and 2021. And Brainy Mermaid in the comments says, Keep the schools and doctors locked down, and I would highly recommend a talking about stranger danger. Hell, I would provide the kids with a whistle or some form of alert around other people. If you don't have cameras, I would suggest getting some for the house and start documenting everything and save it in multiple hard drives. Pray for the best, but prepare for the worst. People do not realize how much information someone can pull from your social media accounts. Even through your friends list and locations, etc., it's truly scary. God forbid this escalates. In the future, you have a plan. As another user already stated on here, if someone wants to find you, they will. Definitely this. My much younger sister is adopted, and her bio family sounds a lot like OP's adopted son. They even tried scouting out kindergartens in the area to look for kids coming out with my sister's names on their school bags, etc. It got to the point, and still is, where nobody was allowed to pick her up from school without the teachers knowing that it would be someone other than my parents, who it was, and the teacher needed to meet them first. As in... The first time I needed to collect her, a few days or so before I went with one of my parents who actually had to walk me up to her teacher, introduce me by name, say I was my sister's sibling, and I would be collecting her on a certain date. I wouldn't have been able to just walk in and collect her, no matter how much my sister would have told them who I was, hugging me and greeting, etc. That's terrifying. I can't imagine how scary that would have been for your parents to find out they were trying to find your sister at her school. It really is incredibly screwed up. My mother even legally changed her own name to make it more difficult for the bio family to find my sister through that route. I'm amazed at the extent people will go to get a child back that they never even wanted. And OP replies, The school pickup list has been limited to me and 17 since 7 started school. I've made the school aware of the situation, so there won't be any slip-ups. Seven knows about Stranger Danger, and I do refresh his memory pretty often. Right now, he's not really leaving the house much, but when he does, he's almost always with me, Seventeen, or both. I know that won't be forever, but at the very least he's pretty much always with someone older right now. Quote, Not wanting to deal with a toddler and go through all the requirements for taking care of him... End quote. So, before you adopted Seven, he was a ward of the state, right? Kinda sounds like relatives found out the state wouldn't put up with their crap, and now that you have custody, they popped back up to see if you would deal with their crap. Like it says in the comments, be very careful, which you are. I would just also say, be very aware of the father's release date. It could be the catalyst for crap going down, and I agree with telling the seven-year-old, at least in child-appropriate terms, that he should scream if a stranger tries to take him somewhere. My mom even had us practicing screaming in the car. We thought it was funny, and the lesson stuck. And OP replies, He came to live with me not long after his mom died, mainly because it was the easiest option in regards to keeping the boys in contact. I try not to judge people's reasons for not taking him in too much. There are several members of his mum's family that would have taken him in in a heartbeat if they had the resources. The only difference is they contacted me straight away to figure out how they could maintain a relationship with the boys. As for his father's release date, I'm keeping an eye on it. At the very least, I'm also certain that he has to register as a sex offender, so I'll be able to check up pretty easily if need be. I know people can get around that, but it gives me a bit of comfort. Posted by user Spits Like a Llama, titled, Would I be the a-hole if I refuse to be part of my in-laws' family tradition? My husband and I have been together for almost six years, married for three. We have a one-year-old. I love his family, but I struggle with the differences in how they treat their son, my significant other, versus their daughter, sister-in-law. Anything she wants, she gets. I don't start drama, however... I will stand up for what I think is right, and it occasionally causes tension. They have a wonderful tradition where they create a picture calendar for their grandma for Christmas. Every month highlights the people whose anniversaries or birthdays it is. The rest filled in with loving memories. 
Since we got married, I'm now in a couple of the photos. I felt loved to have been included in such a tradition, but last year caused issues. Our son's birthday and our anniversary fall in the same month. No one else shares anything special with this month. His parents told us that we could design that page with the three of us however we like. I choose four photos, one of our son just born, one of us as a family, one of him with his great-grandma, and one of just my husband and I. We create the page and send it. We stop by one night to continue helping them. My husband is better at doing it online than them, when I realize my sister-in-law has swapped out one of the photos for a picture of her with my son. I made a comment about how that is not what we designed, and she tells me she likes it that way and wants to use that photo. At this point in time, she's in roughly 75% of the photos slash book. 12 months each with 4 pictures per page equals 48 photos. She is in almost 36 photos out of 48, has a whole page dedicated to just her, and a good portion of her photos are of just her. I suggest she take out of her photos from a previous month and use that one instead. I then changed it back to the photo I wanted. She ushers us out of the house. Christmas comes around and the calendar is brought out. She had changed it back to the photo that she wanted. I was furious but let it go because one, it was for grandma who I adore, and two, we didn't pay for it. His parents did and sister-in-law chipped in a little bit. We offered. This year I offered to help with a calendar again and get told she has a special idea for this year. She wants to do recreation photos. Take an older photo and using the same people, take the photo again. I think it's a great idea and understand that it means my son and I won't be in it. I'm sad but still offer to help. She declines. Then I find out she wants to do half the book with special recreation. She wants to take some of grandma's old photos and use the new gen to recreate them. I think this is great, and now my son and I can at least be in one photo. Nope. She wants to be her grandma in every shot, wants to use my significant other as grandma's husband, and my son as my father-in-law as a baby. They have no use for me. I mentioned this makes me upset and I want to be a part of this tradition, and upon her parents pushing, she tells me I can take the group family photos. Would I be the a-hole if I tell them no? That if I can't be in it, I don't want anything to do with it. Your sister-in-law is acting like a complete pile of garbage, and you absolutely would not be an a-hole for refusing to be a part of it at this point, considering everything she's done to you thus far. She sounds like a terribly narcissistic person, and you're much better off without that negativity in your life, honestly. Doesn't seem like the family cares at this point to intervene. Maybe for them it's better to just let her have her way than to start fights. Sure, that's fine with them, but if alternatively, you want to bring the issue up with them and work towards a solution, I don't judge you for that one either. She created these problems, she can deal with some backlash. Not the a-hole OP. Now in the comments, does Quabfnb says, I hope your sister-in-law reads how many strangers thinks that she has behaved like a total a-hole here. You're about to get a tidal wave of not the a-hole. Maybe you should print out all the comments on one page and arrange them prettily for a new 13th month. Asshole you wary. And OP just laughs at that. And which decision replies... Please make and pay for your own mini-desk calendars and big calendars. Say that you were so inspired by their tradition that you wanted to make some for your parents and siblings. Make all the photos an array of family members. Add in second cousins, neither you or your husband have seen in decades, and only have like two group photos with sister-in-law. Not the a-hole. She really has taken this fun thing and made it her own little fiefdom, hasn't she? How petty of her. Do your own project. Send grandma a nicely framed photo of you and your lovely family to make up for the lack of all of you in the calendar this year. If anyone asks, insist that she didn't invite the family to participate, which is true, as she specifically excluded you. Don't be loud about it. Don't get into arguments about it. Just do your own thing. That's the best revenge. And OP replies, 
We're creating a picture book based around our little guy's first year for her. My husband and I decided that we will just do our own thing. I'm sorry, is it just me, or is it really creepy she wants to do an elaborate photo shoot wherein her brother is her husband? Maybe I'm reading too deeply into it, but she literally wants to recreate a family portrait with your son and husband and put herself in the place of the wife? Logically, I understand they may have a resemblance to the grandparents in question, but something about it feels off to me. Now in the post, OP provides an update and says, Wow, this has taken off. Thanks for all the love. So a few hours after I posted, my significant other came home for lunch and inquired as to why my phone was blowing up. I told him, and he was pissed. Turns out sister-in-law told him a little about the ideas and that the whole family was involved. He assumed that meant me. He is now refusing to do anything unless I'm a part of it and that our son will not be in anything unless we are a part of it. Unless it's a gen pick, i.e. grandpa with grandson. He said I'm his most important family and now he wants nothing to do with the calendar. I'm trying to talk him into talking to his parents first, as this is a lovely tradition. I just want to be a part of it too. And now on to the update. So I promised a lot of you guys to update you on what happens. So this is the basics. In the middle of summer, my husband's parents, without prompt, sat me down and asked me to recreate one photo of my youth to be part of the tradition. Then they asked me to do a recreation of a family photo, but with the new generation. They told me I was part of the family, and I told them I would love to. However, we would have to do it soon, as I was starting school in September, and would be busy between schoolwork and raising a child. During the year, my sister-in-law was having a lot of issues, so everything got put on hold, and we were told the calendar probably wouldn't happen, not to worry about it, so we just dropped it. Two weeks ago, right before the start of my end exams, I get told they now want to do all of the photos. Except I can't because I'm overrun with work, school, and some medical news. I may have cancer. I find some photos of me as a teen in a pirate costume, and then a new one of my husband and I dressed as pirates. But she won't expect it. Find out later on she did her own pirate shot after. I find one of her parents and my husband in the hospital just after he was born, and then sent her one of us and our son just after he was born. She refused, as it didn't quite match. At this point, I'm burnt out and done. I politely tell them I feel so honoured they want me in it, but I just cannot do it these two weeks, and that I totally understand if they want to proceed without me. Instead, they push me to do one, come over to my house the night before an exam and guilt me into doing one that I didn't want done, borrow my husband for just 10 minutes, try one to two hours at a time, right when I need him most, then add in that they need him for a few other nights too. When I tell him no, I need his help studying and watching our son while I study, the sister-in-law throws a small fit about how important all this is. She even tried to guilt my husband about not doing more. So I just stopped trying. So to sum it up, his parents made me feel loved, my husband has been super supportive, my sister-in-law had her own crisis, which I do feel bad about, but that stopped everything and last minute is imposing her demands at an incredibly stressful time while not willing to take any of our suggestions. But my husband and I are almost done the photo book that we made for his grandma, and it doesn't feature much of her, but a lot of our son, family, and grandma. Love you all, and have a Merry Christmas. Now in the comments, Emmy Wee says, Good job for taking the high road. If it was me, sister-in-law's behavior would have led me to throw the cancer card in her face and told her to just include those two sets of photos. Like seriously, in a family, six people, seven if you include grandma, each person should be featured two times. She should be able to do the math. And OP replies, thanks, I haven't actually told them. I'm not ready for the chaos that will ensue. I mean, if you did tell them, your sister-in-law might actually die to one-up you, so... Huh. 
Someone else says, I think this is the best option. Just make your own tradition. Let them keep doing their thing. They, of course, will have a small fit, but just tell them this worked, as it was obviously too much stress to try and fit everything in. But you'd be happy to continue to participate when possible. Now Grandma has the calendar and the photo album. I agree. Less stress in the future. And I hope you are well soon, and that your path to healing is smooth and joyful. And that your studying pays off in the best ways. I'm glad you are finding your own way to join in the tradition, even with certain in-laws that need to sit on a cactus. And OP replies, thank you so much. G'day there guys, and that's the end of today's episode. I do hope you enjoyed it, and were entertained by today's bloody good content. As always, I want to do a quick shout out and a thank you to all my channel members and Patreon subscribers. Your beautiful faces and names will be up on screen right now. Haven't forgot about you guys, sorry I was taking a little break there. So yeah, if you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. If you want to be on this screen, there's links down to the description below where you can sign up and help support the channel and all future projects that I'm going to be doing on this one. With all that said, I hope you guys have an amazing day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to. I'll see you in the next episode, and I do hope you enjoy it. Thank you.